This is our throttle switch. So all the way back is idle. The middle position is for CMOS Auto Performance. We use this, this is our adjustable throttle, so you can adjust how high the throttle goes in normal settings, but it was CMOS Auto. This allows a dynamic power in the cruise pilot to work. If you push it to full throttle, it's just a full throttle setting. So if you're ever going to be using CMOS R performance, if you want to save fuel with the engine management stuff, you need to run the machine in this middle position. Let's talk about our new CMOS Auto Performance. For 2020, it's only available on the Jaguar 970, 980, and 990 with the new series. To access the CMOS Auto Performance, you just need to touch the instrument cluster, and then you can see it come up. This button on the right turns CMOS Auto Performance on and off. If you have that off, it always will stay at the same throttle. If you turn it on, when you turn on turn on a headland, it will reduce the engine RPM. If you stop for a truck, it will reduce engine RPM. To save on fuel, we recommend reusing it. Then the next one is when you put your throttle to the middle position, you can adjust how high the throttle goes up. So with a Jaguar Forge Harvester, you don't need full throttle to achieve most of your harvesting. So we recommend setting that between 1800 and 1850 because all you're doing is wasting and burning fuel. The next one over is the dynamic power part of CMOS Auto Performance. You can have 10 of 10 means that uh, the machine's always going to push to the maximum horsepower. So a Jaguar 990 is 925 horsepower. If you're at level 10, it's always going to try to push the machine to utilize all that horsepower. Now, if we go down to level 7, that means the machine will never go above using 70% horsepower unless you hit a slug in a windrow. So if you have really sluggy windrows and, and you're using the CMOS Auto Performance and the pickup is plugging in really bad plugs, you can uh, set this down to 7 and then so it'll push the machine at 70%. But if you hit a slug, it'll give it the full power. So it just keeps it just a little bit off of maximum capacity. We'll put that back to 10. Then with the CMOS R performance, this is the cruise pilot part. So you can set how fast you want the machine to go up to. So in this case, we've got it set for 7.4 miles an hour. So if we're using full horsepower and not maximizing the capacity, it'll stop at 7.4 miles an hour. You can raise and, and lower that on the screen like we've talked about before. The last one is setting how much it's going to lug the machine down to. So in pickup work, we usually run 100 RPM or so higher than in corn. And this is where it's going to push the machine to. So it's going to keep increasing ground speed and pushing the machine at full full horsepower down to 1680. And if, now if we hit 1650, it's going to start to slow the ground speed of the machine down to maintain the 1680. So in pickup work, we do recommend 1680 to 1720 is a good range. Now, if we are going to do corn, we can lower that down to 1580 to 1600, and the machine's going to keep trying to increase ground speed until it is operating at the 1580. The unique part of CMOS Auto Performance is with the dynamic power part, is if I'm at uh, 7.4 miles an hour, it's going to decrease the horsepower and save on fuel. So if we're in light crops, you'll see down here on the display, if it shows 4 of 10, that means it's only using 40% of the total horsepower of the machine, and then it's going to save a lot of fuel that way because it's not putting all the fuel in for the horsepower. Other nice thing about CMOS Auto Performance is it really... A, it doesn't get so jerky on the ground speed. So if you got 50 yards of, of lighter stuff, instead of really speeding up for it, it'll gradually speed up a little bit, but it'll just decrease the horsepower. So it keeps it nice and consistent so the truck or the tractor driving alongside can keep up with you.